Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, still on industrial electronics and one. So in this platform, we are going to continue from uh, where we left, February 2022, question paper, question number three. Uh, we had some questions that we just given to draw, to state this and that. So this was uh, actually a straightforward uh, question. Question three. Okay, we are given 3.1 to draw a simple diagram, just a simple diagram. Do not complicate the diagram. Okay. Draw a simple diagram of each of the following measuring instruments to indicate how they should be connected in a closed circuit to measure current resistance and voltage respectively. All right, so uh, how can we connect an ammeter in a circuit? Uh, how can we connect an ammeter? We know that an ammeter is actually connected in series. All right, but how is it so? Okay, we have got the circuit here. So that's three point, uh, one one okay so we've got our switch which is closed the load here uh the ammeter then the battery so this is the connection that you're going to have remember ammeter measuring current scale the leads plus or minus that that one but what is important is to show that it is in series that is the major important part and you can actually obtain the full marks and to also to show that it's a closed uh switch that we are given because we are told it's a closed circuit all right, so that was uh, it, and I think uh, everything is pretty clear here. Uh, 3.1 to an ohm meter, an ohm meter. How is it connected? It's supposed to be in a parallel combination, but this should be open. I don't know how now we are going to do it because it's supposed to be open. All right, so that's what you're going to have, an ohm meter and the load. So these two, they should be like this in parallel, the battery. And the switch for that moment is going to be open and closed when measuring the, the second. All right, so just guys, the symbols and everything has to be clear. Then a voltmeter, also a voltmeter is connected in parallel. So we are going to have our voltmeter. In, if you have to cross check, there is another question that we did. It was question number one, which was asking the combination is a voltmeter connected in series or parallel? If you still remember that question, now they want you to draw that. So you see what I was actually saying that they can ask you to draw this. All right, so let's check our voltmeter. That's 3.13. We've got our voltmeter connected in parallel to the load, the switch being closed, the battery. Uh, then uh, what is important is for you to show the voltmeter, the load, the switch, and the battery. These are the most important things that you have. Yes, you can write the red lead, uh, the black lead, this and that, but what is important is this the fourth meter, load, the battery, and the switch to show how the switch, how the battery, how are they connected, all of them. So that is the most important part of the second. All right, so we are not going to waste much time. As you can see, these questions, guys, they are just direct, and I'm just showing you how the departments actually wants you to attempt these typical questions. On 3.2, you are asked to draw a neat, fully labeled diagram of a two-diode full wave rectifier. Take note, this is a full wave, but having two diodes. Remember, a full wave rectifier circuit can have two diodes or it can have four diodes when it is a bridge rectifier. So this one, we are talking about a, uh, a full wave with two diodes, definitely it's going to have a center tab. Okay, so the diagram must include a center tabbed transformer, diodes, that is two diodes, a load resistor, and relevant waveforms which are the relevant waveforms we've got the input and output waveforms so you're supposed to show these okay and that's six marks for that all right so let's see what it looks like so this is what i am having here uh take note this is your input waveform we're having the positive half cycle the negative half cycle uh, this is just supposed to be taken from zero to 360 degrees that for the first half cycle. This is another half cycle and so on. All right. Um, then we've got the input here, which is AC to the transformer, then the center tip, diode D1 and diode D2. So this is our D2, this is our D1, and the center tip to the load. That's what you're having. Uh, so in some cases, they might ask you to have or to put capacitors here. We are not given that we just load the resistor. They might ask you to put a capacitor. If so, then you are going to have your capacitor at this point here. You can just have your capacitor here if they have asked you to do that. But in this case, we do not have that consideration of a capacitor. So just, that's it. 
then the output, yes, it will be, since there's no capacitor, then it will be like that rip. It will be having those ripples, ripples, but only in the positive half cycle. So this will be like this. Uh, it will be actually like this, guys. All right, you'll be having something like this for some time because it won't be having something like that. All right. So that's what you're going to have. Then when it is now having uh, those capacitors, then you'll be seeing that it'll be trying to smoothen, to smoothen, to smoothen. But in this case, we are not having that. So this is what we were supposed to have. All right, sorry for that. This is what we're supposed to have here. Okay, so that's it, I think, for this one. Sorry for that. Sorry for that, guys. I don't know what actually happened here. Let me get back to my screen. All right. So I'm here uh, at this point. We are now given uh, back. All right, let's get back. We are now given on 3.3. State four characteristics of magnetic lines of force. Okay, what are the characteristics of magnetic lines of a force? And that is actually four marks for that. All right, so if you have to cross check here, we have got our crest. There are so many and you're just going to pick one. They are continuous and always form closed loops. They are parallel and do not touch one another. There is a tension along the direction of the lines. This tends to shorten them, okay? Lines that give the same direction tend to push one another apart. So uh, they're like, uh, we are given is just uh, for you to pick any three or any four from these. Okay, they always leave the North Pole and enter the south pole on the outside of a magnetic material. All right, they move from south pole to the north pole inside the magnetic materials. Okay, not from north pole to south, but they move from south to north. Okay, uh, they can ask you this one, uh, this type of a question. They can ask you to, 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 to mention this part. Uh, where do we have the flow of the magnetic material, the flow of... Uh, the magnetic flux that we are having. Is it from south to north or from north to south? So well, this one is actually north, uh, south to north. Okay, and also the magnetic lines, of course, they are invisible. They seek the path of the least resistive between opposite magnetic poles, and they also have the same strength. So any four from these guys, you're supposed to just mention any four, and you'll be able to get that. Uh, those four marks that you see there. Okay, so that was uh, 3.3 of the question. Uh, let's check the other part of the question, which is uh, 3.4, where we are asked to just complete the following sentences by writing only the missing word or words. So it can be a word or they can be words, okay? Next to the question number in the other book, okay, 3.41, adding impurities. Impurity atoms to pure semiconductor material is called doping. If you checked question number one, this question is it's repeated. This question is repeating. They asked this question, now it's repeating again. Okay, 3.42, an insulating material called air separates the two plates of a capacitor. Which, which insulating material is that? That's a dielectric. Dielectric. All right, so a dielectric separates the two plates of a capacitor. Remember, this is a capacitor, so this is the dielectric. It'll be in between. It separates uh, the two plates of a capacitor. Okay, so that's where we have our dielectric. That's where we have uh, the D for the distance of the dielectric there. All right, then the 3.42, a diode we only conduct if it is forward biased. Okay, this one is a straightforward answer. Anyways, I will just hope we saw that one. So when it is forward bias, then it will conduct. Okay, 3.44, the uttermost shell of an electron is referred to as a what shell? That's a valence, the one at the outside, that's a valence shell. All right, then a galvanometer is used to measure a very small what? Is it voltage or current? Okay, a galvanometer, it measured very small currents. So that was actually five marks, if you know your theory. Uh, state four factors that determine the strength of the magnetic field produced by an electromagnet. What 
are the factors which determine that is the question. All right, so we've got our factors here, the number of turns of the coil, uh, the magnetic, the magnitude of the current flow through the coil. Then we also have the type of the type of core material, then the ratio of coil diameter to its length. So by just having this, we are having four marks. So as you can see, the whole of question three, it was all on theory and diagrams. So it's very, very important that you understand your diagrams uh, and the theory part. So it's very, very important, guys. Work on your diagrams and theory. This actually helps a lot. If you can do that, uh, I, I, I beg you guys to do that as much as you can um, now to work on theory. Yes, calculations, we have calculations, but most part, you need to know your diagrams and the explanation, uh, the theory part, you know, we must know how to explain, to describe, especially the explanation, to give the factors that affect, uh, especially those typical questions. Yeah, those are the ones that they will actually, uh, actually ask you. So that's what we had, guys, from question number three, having a total of 25 marks. If you could have answered this way, uh, you could have uh, detail, obtained these typical marks that you're talking about. So that's it, guys, for Mason African Motives. Still on industrial electronics and until we meet again.